Uh, we were talking about emissivity of mixtures of gases, right? In terms of um, when we have to evaluate combustion chambers, right? And we have mixture of participating and non-participating gases. And uh, we said that there are some uh, plots that um, represent emissivities at different pressure temperatures uh, for uh, different gases um, mixed set in a combustion chamber and that uh, they are presented in your textbook. They are the Lotel plots and they can find it in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers website. Two, and there you can find much more uh, different plots. Uh, for different mixtures. So let's solve this problem on combustion gases, uh, how to calculate the effective emissivity of combustion gases. Why we want to know the emissivity of a mixture of gases? Well, to later calculate the heat transfer by radiation, right? Um, so we can account for the contribution of heat transfer by, uh, by radiation. So we have a cylindrical furnace whose height and diameter are five meters and contain combustion gases at 1200 Kelvin and a total pressure of two atmospheres. The composition of the combustion gases is determined by volumetric analysis to be 80% nitrogen, 8% water and 7% oxygen and 5% CO2. Determine the effective emissivity of the combustion of gases. So we have a mixture of gases. Um, so we need to determine what is the effective emissivity of all of these gases uh, present in a cylindrical, um, a cylindrical combustion chamber. And we have here the dimensions in this little drawing there uh, to the right of the slide, right? Uh, we have the diameter and we have also the height of the cylinder and we have the temperature of the gases um, inside the chamber. So we are maintaining all the mixture of gases at 1200 Kelvin. So uh, the temperature, pressure, and composition of the gas mixture is given. So we need to determine the emissivity of the mixture. We are going to assume that all the gases are ideal gases and um, the emissivity determined is the mean emissivity for radiation emitted to all the surfaces in the cylindrical enclosure, not to a particular surface like last time with the furnace. Remember that we calculate like how much from the top to the bottom or the bottom to side. Now it's to all of the surfaces. Um, so the volumetric analysis of a gas mixture gives the mole fractions of the components which are equivalent to pressure fractions for an ideal gas mixture. Then the pr partial pressure of CO2 is uh, calculated by multiplying the molar fraction of the CO2 times the total pressure, okay? And same analysis for the water. So partial pressure of CO2 is the molar fraction of CO2, um, that is 0 0.05 times to atmosphere, the total pressure give us a partial pressure of CO2 of 0.10. We repeat the same analysis for water, um, which is, um, we said that we have 80% of water uh, times two atmospheres. So uh, that give us 0.16 atmospheres. Uh, we were discussing about the mean beam length and we said that this quantity depends heavily on the geometry, right? Um, so the mean beam length of a cylinder, we can take it from table 11.5 in your textbook. So this is the table uh, that help us to normalize for this geometry. Because remember, Lotel studies made done with certain geometry, so we need to add a correction for the geometry. So we are going to choose this one, right circular cylinder, um, height equal to diameter radiating to the whole surface, okay? So we are going to, to choose radiating to the whole surface because that's one of the assumptions we did. If that is not the case, for example, you want to evaluate radiating to center uh, of base and you need to choose another one, you know? So uh, depending on the geometry, you need to choose one of the mean beam land equations. Um, to calculate um, for the geometry or correct for the geometry. So radiating to the whole surface is going to be two thirds times the diameter. So two thirds 
times the diameter give us 3.33 meters, so around three meters. That is the value that you see in here. So this is the table 11.5. Uh, then we need to calculate some intermediate quantities. That is the product of the partial pressure of the gases times the mean beam length. Uh, why? Because we need these values, this product, to go to figures 11.52 and 11.53 and read for um, the emissivities at the temperature given and one atmosphere. So if we calculate then these intermediate quantities and we need to read figures later on. We have the partial pressure of CO2 times the mean beam length that we calculated in the previous slide being three. We have 0.30 meter per atmosphere. Here you have the conversion to feet atmosphere because some of the plots are in feet and some of the plots are in atmosphere. So um, it's better to have both of them available, okay? And in some books you will find them in feet, in some books you'll find them in meters. So uh, here are both in both um, in both systems, international and English. Again, partial pressure of water times the mean beam length give us 0.48 meter atmosphere. So now we can go to figures. So if you can go to figures 1152 and 1153, so we can get the emissivities of CO2 and water corresponding to these values, these products, at the gas temperature of 1200 Kelvin, because that's the temperature we have in the combustion chamber, right? And one atmosphere. So the emissivity for uh, the CO2 is going to be at one atmosphere, 0.16, and water, 0.23. So let's look at that. Uh, in the y-axis, sorry, in the x-axis of the figure 1152, if you can open your book in that figure, uh, you need to select the temperature. In this case, our chamber is at 1200 Kelvin, right? Then we need to look for the product partial pressure mean beam length, right? Uh, that we determine to be 0.48 meter atmosphere, right? Um, so, well, we have here 0.46. So it should be a little bit higher than 0.46, right? Uh, because the next line we have available is 0.61. So once we locate uh, the point, we go all the way to the left and we can read the emissivity of water at a total pressure of one atmosphere being around 0 0.23, 0 0.24, point, around 0 0.20 something, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, 0 0.25. I mean, those values are acceptable, right? Um, be very sure you read the proper figure, right? This is emissivity of water vapor at a total pressure of one atmosphere. Now let's look for the next one. The emissivity of carbon dioxide, again, at a total pressure of one atmosphere. Again, our temperature in the chamber is the same, 1200 Kelvin, right? Um, we already calculate this product, the product of the partial pressure of CO2 and the mean beam length. So that was around 0.30. So we have the 0.30 line there, right? So we don't have to move around and we just go all the way to the left and around 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, whatever. Um, yeah, so those plus minus 0 0.01, it's acceptable. Um, so we have those values already, right? The emissivity of carbon dioxide, sorry, and water at one atmosphere right, from figures 1152, 1153. So these are the base emissivity values at one atmosphere, but we want to know it had two atmosphere uh, of total pressure, right? And for that, to correct for the pressure, we have two extra figures in your textbook, figure 1154 and figure 1155, okay? Uh, to read Figure 1154, you will realize that you need the product of the partial pressure of water uh, times the total pressure divided by two, right? So if you calculate that value, you will find that that is 1.08 atmospheres. So let's get the correction pressure factors for, um, for, for water and for CO2. Um, well, these are figures 1154 and 1155. In your book, they are blue. Um, but that is fine, just locate the figures. And to read the correction factor for the water at a different uh, pressure, we need, again, this product, right? 
partial pressure of water times the total pressure divided by two. That give us 1.08 atmospheres. Uh, we, we, we need to know the product, partial pressure of water in being mean land, right? And in this chart, I have it in feet. I have the value in feet. It was 1.57 feet atmosphere. And I'm not sure your, your, your graphs in your textbook are in atmospheres. Okay. Then you can look for that value in atmospheres. We have the value also in atmosphere. In, sorry, in meters, uh, international system. So please check if you can get around 1.4, 1.5 for the correction factor for water. Figure 1154. Uh, let me check. I have my book here so I can look for it also. 1154, yeah. 1.08 should be around here. And the partial pressure of water times beam mean length in meters was 0.48. Mm -hmm. Point, okay, we have 0.35, so it should be lower, right? 1.3 something, yeah, 1.3, 1.3. Um, here the solution max 1.4. Now let's repeat the same thing for the carbon dioxide. Uh, so if you want to go to your figure 1155 uh, for the carbon dioxide, the in that figure, if you check, you need to use the total pressure, right? And the total pressure in this case is two atmospheres, right? So two atmospheres with uh, the product of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide times beaming length of 0.30. So two and, point, and the line for 0.30. We have a line for 0.31. Uh, so we have the correction factors for the pressure. Why we need to do that? Because our mixture is at a different pressure than one atmosphere, right? Uh, if it is one atmosphere, you will be fine with the numbers on top. Um, so both CO2 and water are present in the same mixture, and we need to correct for the overlap of emission bands. The emissivity correction factor at the temperature of 1200 Kelvin is, can be found in figure 1155. So in 11, uh, in 1156, sorry, uh, plot, you have the delta emissivity to correct for a mixture of vapor and CO2. So when you have these two in the same mixture, you need to correct for the overlap of the emission bands, okay? So if you check that figure, if you can open your book in that figure, is page 784, um, you can see, that we need to calculate some previous um, um, numbers in order to read these plots, right? For the x-axis, we need to calculate partial pressure of water divided by partial pressure of CO2 plus partial pressure of water, right? Uh, so it's what I have in here. Partial pressure of water divided by partial pressure of water plus partial pressure of CO2, 0.61. We also need this quantity that is the summation of the partial pressure of CO2 times the beaming length and the partial pressure of water times the beaming length, right? And that gives us in atmospheres 0 0.78, 0 0.78 atmospheres, meters, atmospheres. So we can go to our correction plot. This is again to correct for the overlap when you have a mixture of vapor and CO2. So we have the value of this product was around 0.615. Why did I choose this plot? Well, because the temperature, that's correct. It's the temperature we are dealing with, right? 1200 Kelvin. And the summation of these two was around 0.78, so somewhere there. And we go all the way to the left and we have a correction for the overlap of around 0.4, 0.6. Um, for eight, for nine. Uh, so that would be our correction for the overlapping of the emission band whenever we have the mixture water CO2. Now we can calculate the effective emissivity of the combustion gases. That is going to be um, equal to the correction factor, right, for carbon dioxide times the emissivity of carbon dioxide at one atmosphere, right? We are multiplying 
by the correction factor? Well, because we, don't, we have other than one atmosphere. We repeat plus um, the correction factor for the water, emissivity of the water at one atmosphere, minus the overlap, minus the uh, correction of the emissivity, give us a final value of 0.45. So this is the average emissivity for radiation emitted to all the surfaces of the cylindrical enclosure. What happens if you need to calculate for just one wall? Well, you need to change the beam mill length, right? And as you can see, all your calculations are going to change because the beam mill length is involved in every single calculation or important correction in here, right? Once you have this emissivity, well, you can calculate the contribution of heat transfer rate by radiation. So that's the way we calculate um, heat transfer by radiation contribution in combustion chambers. As you can see, the process is not complicated. You just need a lot of plots available, especially for correction and reading values. <laughs> 